What's up, everybody? I am Tiana Taylor Balmain. How you doing? I am legendary Atlanta father, Zoe Balmain. I am the legendary East Coast father, Javon Balmain. I'm the legendary Midwest father, J.D. Balmain. I'm the Atlanta mother, Mon Cherie Balmain. The Balmain, the overall mother of the house of Balmain. And Nikki Balmain, a.k.a. the boss lady. And I am the overall father, the icon, known to some, <laughs> of the house of Balmain. I should be saying I'm up and coming iconic because let me let's talk about that, okay? <laughs> this is the up and coming icon, overall mother Felicity Benoit Valmont. Thank you, because I've been in the, I've been doing this thing since two thousand and one. Yeah, like, how much longer do y'all want me yeah. to be all gray? Okay, for the people, just for for, for clarity, the pr correct pronunciation of the house name is Valmont. I like to say Beaumont. Um, I'm a fashion person, and if you look up the pronunciation, Valmont. But for the rappers, the regulars. So we are the house of Balmain. Is Balmain. Yeah, the kind of common phrase or pronunciation is Balmain. We have Balmains and we have Balmains in the house. I didn't know we had a difference. It's the house of Balmain is one single entity. I was about to say. There isn't a, <laughs> a, a different group or a different group. Everybody, like I said, we're, we're not Banji. And we're not classy. Right. We're chic. Things walk and and win. The Balmans, so the Balmans are the walkers and, and the, the winners. Balmans and the Balmans are the ones that <laughs> just barely show up to anything. Just, just kind of come out and oh, so, so I wonder what they call so. me. Felicity is a very um, silent partner, but she's present when she needs to be present. <laughs> the Balmains are like the real, the more bougie ones, you know, the the, the classy, the fashionable ones. Then you got the Balmains. <laughs> the ones who walk, the ones who win, the yeah. ones who are battle cats, the ones who travel, the ones who, the ballroom girls and all the other houses know the, the one namers in the house of Balmain, you know. But then you also have the people who just be in dress code. Oh. Yin when, and yang. When needed, you come out. I was about to say, when needed, Correct. I'm you there. So the house was founded. We have three main founders. Rodney, the icon, Rodney Balmain. Um, the house was started um, June 1st, mm -hmm. um, 2015. Mm -hmm. um, I had left my former house, which at that time I was the overall father of Prodigy. Uh, legendary uh, Nikki or Alexis, whichever you want to call her, boss lady is what we call her. I'm one of the founders. I'm from the original. Uh it's time for me to start my own legacy. Um, I called upon the aid of um, Nikki Taylor, Alexis Clark to some, and also Kai. He's now um, back in Milan. You know, um, Rodney hit me up about, what, six years? Six years. Six six years. years. It's been six years now. Uh, Rodney hit me up about starting a house. So like, this one should take a ball. I was like, I'm really finished. I don't feel like being a father. Um, to help me with my vision. And we set out recruiting. Yeah, well, you would you like to be a part of something new, fresh, mm -hmm. in ballroom? And I was like, uh. I said, well, who are we talking about? And she told me, you know, myself, Rodney, and Kai got together and started a house, and you know, and I said, well, what's the name? She said, Balmain. I was like, <laughs> I said, all right, we'll see what happens. And you know, I'm a, I'm a A1, day one. I ain't left, I'm from the originals, and I'm one of the, I am the, We started out with eight, and I think she made them. I was number nine. Uh, we got our overall mother, the lovely Felicity, on board as well. And then we went to, you know, various 007s <laughs> um, and asked them were they um, interested in starting mm. and um, bringing my vision to life. 
and they did and um, on September I don't know the date um, 2016, 2016 in Atlanta um, we debuted the house of Balamore I had just not just I was the house of Mizrahi it's just that's all I knew and um, still family to this day and I took a break um, it was 2016, 2015. I took a break around 2013. I started my own business. And um, I wanted to kind of step away from ballroom just to kind of, you know, be be focused on what I, the direction I wanted to go in my personal life. Um, and I was hoping that I got the support um, outside of ballroom without being um, house affiliated. And um, you guys came to me. And I, at first I was like, no, I'm sorry. I just don't have time. I just, very very hesitant. Only because I just felt it, I'm gonna be honest with you. I experienced a lot of things in the house of Mizrahi that um, aided my exit. And I just didn't want to experience those same things. Not saying it was bad. I'm just saying I just kind of stepped away. And so when you guys came to me, I was like, "Mm, no, I'm okay. Flattered, honored, thank you. You know, but but they they were persistent. Um, the founders were persistent, and I said, well, you know what? Then I spoke with you, and um, that was the conversation that was needed because I've always had respect for you from day one of ever meeting you, and you know, and I just said, you know what? It seems like this will be a breath of fresh air, and um, I wanted to take this journey with you. Oh, okay. So I can describe Rodney's leadership. I definitely think Rodney's leadership style is um is kind of situational depending upon um, the person that he's dealing with. Rodney is a very much, I'm going to give it to you, blunt. Stern. And fuck. I'm stern. But Rodney has taught me how to be a good leader. I will uh, honestly say that he corrects me when I'm wrong. And he, even though he knows sometimes I don't act like I hear, I do listen. But Rodney has been a great, very great leader, and I'm sure he has. A little soft at times, but <laughs> I'm going to give it to you how it is. You either like it or you don't. Um, zero tolerance. You know, I'm a little bit more sensitive. You know, I, I kind of wear my shoulders on my sleeve. Um, so when we have different conversations and, and things like that, um, as it pertains to the house. It's the tough love for me. Rodney knows how to talk to all of us, mm-hmm. leaders and He's members. All the time. Leaders and members included in a different way. No filter. He loves you down. He doesn't listen to respond. Rodney does not go into conversations with what he already know. Rodney goes, oh, okay, well, I didn't know that. See, no one told me that. Mm-hmm. I say Rodney has like a PhD in ballroom. I definitely feel like Rodney is, is non-confrontational. He, 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 he would try his best uh, to avoid confrontation at all costs. Um, but in the event that it needs to, something that needs to be done, um, he doesn't have a situ- uh, issue with, you know, laying down a hammer when it needs to be. As far as ballroom, like to me, he's like one of the dopest people because he's everywhere. He does everything. He knows everybody. But it's the tough love because ballroom is not for the soft. Mm-hmm. Ballroom is not for the easily, you know, faint hearted type of girls or boys. It's not. But he doesn't feel like he needs to baby you. Um, and he doesn't need to pacify you and, and all of those things. When it comes to leadership, <laughs> the overall mother, if she is basically like a real mother when it comes to the nurturing and the spoiling of the kids. Um, when Felicity came to the house, Felicity came as a force in ballroom, a force in her category, a force in the city of Atlanta. Um, and, and, you know, she's extremely nurturing. She has a very personal relationship with a lot of the kids here. You know, baby, them, you know, you know, all of that. But I will say this. Once I bring her all of the facts that are out there by me being stern. R- running an organization like this ain't easy. And you do have to have a lot of honest, people who do right. different things. Right. Mm-hmm. She handle a lot of stuff that I don't want to. She weighs those options and then she comes to a clear decision on what we are discussing. So that is- I will say this. If we ever seem to be at odds, I always have your back. 
Just just know that. Because I know that for the overall good, I know where you're headed. And I know why you made the decision you made. Okay, so one of my kind of like cheerleader moments. A moment for a member that I knew like the conviction, the, 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 the pain the, of joy. Um, but um, when Tiana won that 2021, that was 2021. Uh, <laughs> so deep and embedded was Tiana Taylor. What he's been through, going, gone through. Um, just this past ball in North Carolina at the West Ball. Um, she's definitely been doing her thing, doing her thing, doing her thing. And that $2,021 um, that she won at that ball really was emotional for her as well as for me as a father. Um, <laughs> and it was kind of like we pulled this together at the last minute and mm -hmm. she got up there and did her thing and the house was just going up. Like we were the livest house. Yeah, yeah. You know, Clip so show. it didn't matter, you know, who was on the floor. Mm -hmm. We was just going up. We was having this a great time. Yes. I was not expecting this. Um, I'm not a ballroom favorite. When you can sit back and you can see how um, someone may have had a loss in competing mm -hmm. prior, but then set it up to win this big major win. Just being very 100. Um, Barbara was built of so many different stories. And um, off the floor, I'm everybody good homeboy. Mm -hmm. Everybody like yeah. me. I don't have a problem with nobody. Um, on the floor, my looks kill. Everybody like what I wear but I don't hang with the people in my category and I don't hang with the who's who of ballroom. I have to share that as well, the emotion that came behind it. Because you know, sometimes in ballroom, um, you don't get your roses all the time um, while you're here. And, and you put so much time and effort into sometimes not even saying, getting to hear you did a great job. Like that was a huge, huge gift. Yeah, you know, yeah. for the house. For the house. Mm -hmm. You know. In addition to that, I'll say, I was just telling somebody the other day. You know, no matter where I am when I'm in the ball, I could be at the bathroom, I could be at the bar. As soon as I hear ball, <laughs> man, I'm just trying to bridge the gap. Uh, pretty much to say from the older generation and new generation when it comes to the family aspect and just the ball walking aspect. Um, I think it's something that's real important to remember is that old school ballroom, you didn't question your leader. Right. Mm -hmm. You didn't question the, the, mother or, the mother or the father. The father said we weren't all black and we get into the ball at 8 p.m. Y'all heard what he said. In our house, the kids were like, black and white? <laughs> Again? Black? Okay, what time? And... <laughs> At first, we were like, okay, the DJ is just disrespectful. But it's not they're disrespectful. I think a lot of the young LGBT kids everywhere, not just ballroom, have a very free and open mind and just want to be heard and be spoken to and not spoken at. More of them seeing what we do as a whole, as a genuine thing, whether it's checking on you for school, um, making sure that you are in school or you're doing good or you go to work or whatever like that. And then also, they don't feel like, one thing I've learned about our kids, they don't mind speaking up. They want to be a part of it. They want to be heard. So they try to make sure that they make their business to, to say, you know, say things. If they don't feel like something is right, they want to say, hey, it might take them a while to say it or get to that point to say it, but they eventually do say, hey, I don't like this, this is what we need to do, uh, this is what we want to do, whatever, whatever. Little extracurricular activities like bowling, mm -hmm. um, skating, and um, dinners, which we do a lot. Um, so and people, they feed into that. And mm -hmm. whether they're old or new, it kind of bridges the gap that way. And they see it, and oh, well, it's, you know, having a cocktail or two to celebrate. Or two, um, <laughs> or three, or four. Um, some joyous occasions and their wins and stuff. They like to be appreciated, like yeah. to be recognized for their uh, contributions to the house, so. You know what that. I've noticed too, like, um, and, and this is maybe why my, my leadership skills are a little different, is because whenever we have like the younger generation coming in, I try to understand like, everyone was not raised the same. Like, you know how some kids weren't raised on love, they were raised on survival. And, and some were just raised on just nurturing and, and just 
that type of love. So I try to look at each individual child whenever I do speak to certain kids and try to build that bond depending on how they were raised. In a situation where I felt like, well, not felt, I had to step up and it wasn't necessarily um, ballroom related, it was just motherly duties, is um, oftentimes in a house you have a child that is going through life. They may not have the support of their immediate family. It may be someone that's facing eviction. It may be someone that just got put out after they had a bad breakup or someone that's just literally stranded um, somewhere in a city where they feel like they have no other hope. I, more than once, more than twice, have had to step up and say, here, we're gonna get you out of that situation. Um, here's this money, get you to somewhere safe. You it. <laughs> if I were to die tomorrow, who would I make overall father? It would be between two individuals, mm -hmm. so I can't, you know, and that would either be the Midwest father, J.D. Balmain, or the East Coast father, Javon Balmain. If I died and had to leave a will and um, I had to name the next overall mother, um, Mon Cherie <laughs> or um, Nikki Taylor. I, I, those two will be able to step up to the plate and do what needs to be done. I feel as though people should come to the House of Balmain Ball. Sunday, September 5th, 2021. Um, we're presenting power. Um, every every single house right now um, is in a position where they want to get out there on the floor. When you go to any ball and you see the ball mains there, what are we doing? We're having us a great time. We one of our models is ball main. We came to party. Um, they've been anticipating the house of ball main to have an event. There's gonna be moments made, a lot of coins. It's a big rich town. <laughs> it's a big rich town. And we're doing it on a major weekend, Gay Pride weekend. It's a it's a place to be. No shame. Like we're we're not holding back on the budget. We're making sure from A to Z you walk in that door and you feel important. It's for sentimental reasons as well as hard work being done. For the last six years. We built everything from the ground up. We did not come with a starter kit from other houses. Like, you know, some people that are starting new houses, they come from other houses to, to make that happen. We started from the ground up with a lot of fresh, new talent. Uh, myself and the house, we have supported everyone. We have traveled. We have um, supported everyone, especially mm. myself. So especially for, for me, the older generation, I feel, should come mm -hmm. for, for support for me for that. And the younger generation, because their peers that are in, in the house as well, they have been out there. Some came from, we have a lot of green talent. So to see them groom and nurtured and become of the year and <laughs> stuff like that, it's time for them to be celebrated. I totally agree, because it's, it's no shade, Rodney. If, if you expect anyone's face to be at a ball in support, it's you. Like, hands down, if they could give an award for the best all around support system, it's Rodney. He will support you if you support him. He will support you even if you don't support him. He's still gonna find that little bit of good to say, I'm gonna support this.